Okay, if you already know how to do electron configurations and need to know about some exceptions to the rules, you're in the right place. What I'm discussing now has to do with unstable configurations that happen in some of the sublevels that go against the off-ball principle, that is, starting at the lowest level, adding electrons to the lowest level, and building up from there. There are some exceptions to the rules. They're actually fairly easy after you see how they uh, are put together. So we're going to proceed on to that now. Okay, these the exceptions that we're talking about start happening around the third and fourth energy level. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to pick up, uh, pick out a few examples of things that behave normally, and then some that do not. So starting out with that, we're going to start talking about potassium, which as you can see is Ar4s1. It's right there. Uh, we're, the next one is calcium. We're actually going to skip that one uh, there. Uh, the next one is a 3D1, which is scandium, and it's right there. Then we're going to continue on, although we're not going to highlight each one. There's titanium, there's vanadium, there's chromium. We're actually going to come back to that because that's one of the ones that we're talking about, about having an exception to the rule. Then manganese, we're going to revisit that a couple of times. Manganese is 4s2, 3d5, and the 3d5 you would predict, you can count it right off, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, just like you would predict. Then we'll go on from there, there's iron, it's 3d6, cobalt is 3d7, nickel is 3d8, and then copper is one we're going to come back and revisit, because it turns out this isn't the whole story on copper. Uh, so the next is, is zinc, and zinc is exactly like you would predict it, 3D10, starting back at 5, 3D5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So there we go, that's, uh, that's zinc. So what we're going to do is go back through this, and then we will redo this pointing out the ones that exhibit exceptions to some of the rules. So again, there's uh, potassium, and then there's calcium, and then after that is scandium again. Scandium again is uh, 3D1, it's on the first block. After that is titanium, vanadium again, and then finally we're back to, to chromium one more time. And pretty much anybody would predict, if you knew anything at all about electron configuration, anybody would predict that chromium would be 4s2, 3d4. There we go, 1, 2, 3, 4. But it turns out that this configuration, where you have your one electron away from a half-filled or a completely filled sublevel like this, turns out is very, very unstable. We're talking Charlie Sheen unstable, Kanye unstable, all right? So because it's not stable in that configuration, it has to do something else. And what happens is, uh, instead of having 4s2, 3d4, we have 4s1, 3d5. And as you might guess, it basically just borrows an electron from the 4s. So if you didn't see that, electron starts out here and then jumps to over there. So the electron configuration for chromium is going to be 4s1, 3d5, and that's not what you would expect from uh, the other types of configurations from the rules that we usually follow. All right, so uh, when I teach this, I sometimes will get a question about, hey, you know, what about what about manganese? Uh, as manganese should be 3d5, and if you look up here, it, it is 3d5. It's just 4s2, 3d5, whereas this is 4s1, 3d5. So just don't let that throw you if you happen to, you know, uh, kind of run across that. All right, we're going to, uh, and this is the uh, electron configuration, or rather the off-ball diagram for manganese. So we're going to continue on by just pointing out that chromium and molybdenum and tungsten and the others, uh, they all have this, this characteristic where if they're, they're, it looks like it should be the four electrons in the d orbital. There's actually five. They borrow one from the S. So uh, just be aware that, that is the, that's the case for all those elements that are chromium and below. All right, so continuing on, uh, iron is 3D6, 
Cobalt is 3d7. Nickel is 3d8. Copper is 3d9, and we're at another situation where we're one electron away from, in this case, a completely full sublevel, which turns out is very unstable. All right, so you would expect copper to be 4s2, 3d9, based on where it is. It turns out it's not. All right, that doesn't exist in nature like that. It turns out that the same exact thing happens. We borrow an electron from the 4s, and it becomes 4s1, 3d10. Right. So just as the case with manganese, uh, sometimes people might you know, get a little bit confused with it. You know, hey, wait a minute. Zinc is supposed to be 3d10. Well, zinc is 3d10. It's just 4s2, 3d10, whereas copper is 4s1, 3d10. So that's, uh, that's kind of a non-existent uh, problem there, so just, just remember that. The only thing left to point out, really, is that the other elements below the copper, just like is the case with the chromium, uh, these other elements, they have the same situation with their electrons borrowing it from, uh, from the 4S. So that's, uh, that's it. That concludes the presentation on the exceptions to the rules and the because of the unstable electrons and that is it